I'm very happy to be at the Bourne Library, and I'm going to read books today about spring and some animals that are here in the spring that we'll see in the spring. The first book I'm going to read is called My Garden by Kevin Henks. And um, because it's spring and uh, we're going to start planting our seeds pretty soon, and maybe you like to work in the garden, I do. So my mother has a garden and I'm her helper. I water, I weed, and I chase away the rabbits so that they don't eat all the lettuce. It's hard work and my mother's garden is very nice. But if I had a garden, There would be no weeds, and the flowers would keep blooming and blooming and never die. In my garden, the flowers would change color just by thinking about it. Pink, blue, green, purple, even patterns. And if you picked a flower, another one would grow right back in its place. In my garden, the rabbits wouldn't eat the lettuce because the rabbits would be chocolate and I would eat them. If I planted seashells, I'd grow seashells. If I planted jelly beans, I'd grow a green, great big jelly bean bush. Sometimes in my garden, Good, unusual things would just pop up. Buttons and umbrellas and rusty old keys. In my garden, there would be birds and butterflies by the hundreds so that the air was humming with wings. The tomatoes would be as big as beach balls and the carrots would be invisible because I don't like carrots. At night, the morning glories would stay open, shining like stars, and the strawberries would glow like lanterns. It's night now, only the fireflies in the porch light are glowing. Before, before bed, I take one seashell from the, sh from the shelf in my room and go to the garden. I poke the seashell into the ground. Who knows what might happen? I cover it with dirt and put down the dirt with my, stamp, pat down the dirt with my foot. What are you doing? asks my mother. Oh, nothing, I say, just working in the garden. The end. This is quiet in the garden. Written and illustrated by Alika. Quiet in the garden. Okay. 
I love to go out in the garden. I see flowers, bushes, berries, trees, and a little pond. I sit quietly. If I am very still, I see more. I am so quiet, I even hear sounds around me. Chirp, squish, crunch. I can almost hear a butterfly flutter by. I sit still and listen. Today, a robin flew down and nibbled red berries from a bush. Why did you do that? asked a snail. I was hungry, said the robin, and off it flew. The snail ate holes in some leaves. Why did you do that? asked a butterfly. It's what I do when I'm hungry, said the snail, as it slid away. The butterflies sipped nectar from the flowers. Why did you do that? asked a worm. I was thirsty, said the butterfly, and it is so tasty and sweet. The worm squiggled in the soil to eat bits of plants and bugs. Why did you do that? asked a squirrel. I was hungry, said the worm, squiggling under again. Goodbye. The squirrel crunched on an acorn. Why did you do that? asked a spider. Uh, we want guy, said the squirrel, crunching away. The spider caught a fly in its web. Oops, said a turtle. Well, I'm hungry, said the spider, as it ate the fly. I watched the turtle munch on soft moss by a rock. Why did you do that? asked a lizard. I was hungry, said the turtle. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The lizard crawled along a wall and snapped up a moth. Why did you do that? asked a frog. I was hungry, said the lizard, and I couldn't wait until dinner time. The frog hopped up and caught a gnat. Why did you do that? asked a fish. I was hungry, said the frog, and I didn't want to eat you. The fish nibbled some algae. And why did you do that? asked a mouse. I was hungry, said the fish, and it, dro and it dove for more. The mouse crunched seeds, leaves, berries, and bugs in the compost heap. Why did you do that? asked my rabbit. I was very hungry, said the mouse, chomping on an apple core. And I still am. My rabbit nibbled on a leaf. I know why you did that, I said. My rabbit didn't say, it just munched away. I picked apples, berries, radishes, carrots, a cucumber, and more for a picnic with my friends. The robin, snail, butterfly, worm, and squirrel, spider, turtle, lizard, and the frog, fish, mouse, and my rabbit. What a racket they all made. Buzz, nibble, chomp, chew, crunch, bite, sip, slurp, gulp, swallow, munch. We were hungry in the, yu in the yummy. Not so quiet garden with food enough for all. You can make your own quiet garden. The end. This is a book called Duck on a Bike by David Shannon. And I like to ride my bike, so I picked this book to read because I thought it was cute. I don't think I've ever seen a duck on a bike, but I um, enjoy this book, <laughs> seeing the duck riding his bike. 
One day down on the farm, Duck got a wild idea. I bet I could ride a bike, he thought. He waddled over to where the boy had parked his bike, climbed on, and began to ride. At first, he rode very slowly and wobbled a lot, but it was fun. Duck rode past Cow and wanted and waved to her. Hello, Cow, said Duck. Moo, said Cow. But what she thought was a duck on a bike? That's the silliest thing I've ever seen. Then Duck rode past Sheep. Hello, Sheep, said Duck. Bah, said Sheep. But what she thought was He's going to hurt himself if he's not careful. Duck was riding better now. He rode past Dog. Hello, Dog, said Duck. Woof, said the Dog. But what he was thinking was, that is a mighty neat trick. Then Duck rode past Cat. Hello, Cat, said Duck. Meow, said the cat, but what she thought was, I wouldn't waste my time riding a bike. Duck pedaled a little faster. He rode past horse. Hello, horse, said duck. Nee, said horse. And what he thought was, you're still not as fast as me, duck. Duck rang his bell as he rode toward Chicken. Hello, Chicken, said Duck. Cluck, cluck, said Chicken. But what she thought was, which way? Watch where you're going, Duck. <laughs> then Duck ro rode past Goat. Hello, Goat, said Duck. Ma, said Goat. But what he thought was, I'd like to eat that bike. Duck stood on, on the seat and rode past Pig and Pig. Hello, Pig, said Duck. Oink, said Pig and Pig. But what they thought was, Duck is such a show-off. Then Duck rode no hands past Mouse. Hello, Mouse, said Duck. Squawk, said the Mouse. But what he thought was, I wish I could ride a bike like Duck. Suddenly, a whole bunch of kids came down the road on bikes. They were in such a hurry that they didn't even see Duck. They parked their bikes by the, by the house and went inside. What do you think they're thinking? <laughs> All the animals who went past. Yep. Now all the animals had bikes. They rode around and around the barnyard. This is fun, they all said. Good idea, duck. Then they put the bikes back by the house, and no one knew that on that afternoon, they had seen a cow, a sheep, a dog, a cat, a horse, a chicken, a goat, two pigs, a mouse, and a duck on bikes. The end. Okay, this is uh, Anywhere Farm, Phyllis Root, illustrated by Brian G. Brian Karras. Anywhere Farm. For an Anywhere Farm, here's all that you need. Soil, sunshine, water, and a seed. Fat seed or skinny seed, pointy or round, tenderly tuck it down into the ground. Then you watch and you wait for water you weed your seed will sprout out as its own speedy speed. S seedy speed.
say that a few times. <laughs> and you'll have an anywhere, anywhere farm. Where can you plant your anywhere farm? An old empty lot makes a good growing spot, but a pan or a bucket, a pot or a shoe, a bin or a tin, or a window will do. Plant a farm in a crate, plant a farm in a cup, in a box on a balcony, 10 stories up. Plant a farm in a truck, in a box on a bike. Plant an anywhere farm, anywhere that you like. Anywhere that you have some soil, some seed, some sunshine and water, that's all you need. For your anywhere, anywhere, anywhere farm, what can you plant on your anywhere farm? Kale in a pail, corn in a horn, beets and zucchini, oregano, beans, Hickama broccoli, radishes, greens. Tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and peas. On your anywhere farm, plant whatever you please. Who might come to visit your anywhere farm? You might see a monarch, a ladybug, bees. Hummingbirds, cardinals, fat chickadees. Your neighbors might come when they see what you've grown. When they say they, when they see what you've grown, they might want an anywhere farm of their own. You might give them some seeds, but they plant that they plant in a can, a carton, a wash tub, an old frying pan in a boat or a boot or right in their yard. Anybody can do it. You've, sh you've sh showed it's not hard. With your farm in a basket and mine on a chair, with soil and sunshine and water and care, one day all our anywhere, farms anywhere, might turn into anywhere, everywhere farm, everywhere. Where does it all start? What do you need? Just one farmer, you, and one little seed. And you get a big flower. This is called Spring Song with Barbara Suling, illustrated by Greg Newbold. When the snow melts and rushes down the mountainside, what does the black bear do? wakes up to greet a summer treat. When the sun warms the hard ground and makes it soft, what do moles do? Dig a new row of tunnels below. When breezes stir the air in woodland burrows, what do striped skunks do? Leave their den to roam again. When, all, when tall reeds grow across the marshy wetlands, what do bullfrogs do? Croak the night long their mating song. When the birds appear on the cottonwood trees. What do eagles do? Build high nest where newborns will rest. 
When new grass grows in the sunny meadow, what do rabbits do? Hop all over in the clover. When cocoons burst open and the release their prize, what do people do? Come out to cheer, for spring is here. The end. This, I liked this book. This was uh, maybe something beautiful. How Art Transformed a Neighborhood, uh, written by, Isabel Compi, Compoy and Teresa Howell, and illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Maybe something beautiful. In the heart of a, of a gray city, there lived a girl who loved to doodle, draw, color, and paint. Every time she saw a blank piece of paper, Mira thought to herself, hmm, maybe. And because of this, her room was filled with color and her heart was filled with joy. On her way to school one day, Mira grew around, gave a round apple to Mr. Henry, the owner of the shop down the street. She gave a flower to Mrs. Lopez, the lady with the sparkling eyes. She gave a songbird to Mr. Sachs and a red heart to the policeman who walked up and down the streets. On her way home, Mira tapped a, taped a glowing sun onto the wall hiding in the shadows. Her city was less gray, but not much. The next day, Mira saw a man with a pocket full of paintbrushes. He gazed at the wall, he looked at her son, he held his fingers up to a square and peered through them. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. <clears throat> what do you see, Mira asked. Maybe something beautiful, the man replied. Pam, bow. Then just that, he dropped a brush in the paint, the shadows scurried away Sky blue cut through the gloom. The man's laughter was like a rainbow spreading across the sky. Who are you, Mira asked. I'm an artist, he said, a muralist. I paint on walls. I'm an artist too, she told him. And he handed Mira a brush. Then come on. Mira dipped in the loudest color she saw. Yowie! The wall lit up like sunshine. As the man drew pictures on the bricks, Mira added color, punch, and pizzazz. Soon Mr. Sachs joined in, then came others. Everyone painted to the rhythm, salsa, merengo, and bija. Even Mira's mama painted and she danced the cha-cha-cha. The whole neighborhood became a giant block party until the policeman walked up. Excuse me, he said. The music stopped. Mira put her brush down. They were surely in trouble. The officer cleared his throat, then paused. May I paint with you, he asked. So Mira handed him a paintbrush and the music started again. Teachers and papas joined in. Babies too. Mira and the man la handed the out paintbrush after brush. Color spread throughout the streets. So did joy. Wherever Mira and the man went, art followed like a string of a kite. After they colored the walls, they painted utility boxes, benches, they decorated sidewalks with poetry and shine, 
and everybody danced. Together they created something more beautiful than they had ever imagined. When their clothes were splattered with millions of colors, everybody sat down to rest except the muralist. His eyes sparkled. You, my friends, are all artists, he told them. The world is your canvas. He smiled wide and pulled everything together in a big sweeping motion. His paintbrush was like a magic wand. When he was finished, Mira added one more bird way up in the sky. Maybe she thought, just maybe. And this book is about uh, in, inner city when the uh, neighborhoods get together and they paint murals on the um, sides of buildings. Beautiful colors. Thank you for allowing me to read to you today. I love this library. I come here all the time, and I know that you'd love to come and see all the wonderful children's books. These are just some of them, but there's so many of them to pick from. Happy spring, everyone. Mm -hmm.